All right, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, repressible operons first. Sorry about my spelling here. Okay, so repressible operons. Uh, what happens with repressible operons is that these are going to be operons that are always in the on position um, unless a certain molecule builds up within the cell. So let me go ahead and draw a gene here, gene here, gene here. And operons can have different levels of genes. I'm just drawing three in our, my examples here. And then right here, there's my promoter region, and here is my, oops, here is my operator switch, okay? So in a repressible operon, it's always in the on position. And what's going on here is these genes right here code for making enzymes that are going to build. So it's usually repressible operons are usually involved in building certain molecules within the cell. These genes are not instructions for building the molecule. So I want to be very clear with that. That's where a lot of people mess up. So these genes are not instructions for building the molecule. These genes are instructions for building enzymes that are going to be part of a metabolic pathway that will actually help build the molecule. So again, these are genes for building the enzymes that will then build a molecule. And what happens here in this case, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my repressor here. Okay, um, There's usually a spot on the repressor. and whatever this metabolic pathway builds, so let's say it builds a molecule at the end, well during this metabolic pathway a whole bunch of this molecule builds up and when the molecule builds up it gets to a point where the cell has made enough of that molecule. So again it would start with a precursor, I want to make sure everybody understands, and then you know, something like this, and that goes to something like this, Okay, so it goes through a series of steps and these enzymes are needed in order to get these, this final molecule, to build this final molecule. But it gets to a point eventually where the cell has enough of this built. And if it keeps on building more, it's a waste of energy and it's a waste of materials. So in order to make it so that way we st the, the prokaryote stops building this, one of these can bind to the repressor. So it's going to come along and it's going to bind to repressor. I'm going to put it in white so that we can see that it binds. When it binds to the repressor, it actually causes the repressor to change shape. So let's say it looks more like this now. Which looks more like this here. Okay, So it basically causes it to change shape a little bit and this is still bound to it. And when it changes shape, now it can come and bind here. When this repressor binds here, that's going to turn off these genes. That means they won't be transcribed, they won't be translated, which means these enzymes won't be made. So when these enzymes aren't made, imagine this isn't made, this isn't made, this isn't made, now you can't make this. So now the cell has turned off the genes for making these enzymes and no longer makes the product anymore. Um, and again, the whole point is so it's not wasting energy or materials. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at an inducible operon now. Okay. So an inducible operon is going to be one that's in the off position um, most of the time, and then usually it'll be switched into the on position when needed. Okay. So once again we have our DNA here. And again, I'm going to just draw three genes just to make it simple here. Okay. Then we have our promoter region. And we have, once again, our operator switch. Okay. Now in an inducible operon, the, the uh, repressor is attached most of the time. So the repressor is attached. That's not a sad face. That's a, that's a spot where something can bind. Um, the repressor is attached, which means RNA polymerase can't come and bind and um, transcribe these genes. So that means the enzymes that these genes code for can't be made. Once again, 
these are genes that code for enzymes in a metabolic pathway. So again, you'd look at E1, E2, and E3. So that would be E1, E2, E3. These, these are the instructions for how to build the enzyme E1. These are instructions for E2, and these are instructions for E3. And um, when this is connected, those enzymes aren't made. So that usually means that whatever the molecule that's supposed to be made here is not being made. Inducible operons are almost always connected with breaking apart, so catabolism, breaking apart something. So let's say um, there is a bacteria and lactose becomes available to the bacteria. So a whole bunch of lactose becomes available. How does it become available? The bacteria takes it in. So the lactose is in its environment uh, surrounding the bacteria. So picture here's the bacteria here. It's lactose free. It doesn't have any lactose inside of it, but all of a sudden there's lactose available. So it takes the opportunity to bring those lactose in. So these are the lactose. Takes those lactose inside. And now it has to be able to break those down. So if it doesn't have lactose, it doesn't need to make these enzymes to break it down. So again, if no lactose was in a bacteria, so there's no lactose in a bacteria, it doesn't need to make these enzymes. So it doesn't need to waste energy building these enzymes. So it's gonna keep the um, genes for those turned off. But when lactose does become available, like we see here, now lactose is available, it has to be able to break down the lactose. So what happens is, as more and more lactose becomes available, some of the lactose binds to the repressor. The repressor is gonna change shape and fall off. So the repressor changes shape and falls off. Now, RNA polymerase comes, it transcribes these genes into mRNA, the mRNA into the enzymes one, two, and three, and now these can take the lactose and break it apart. So enzyme one takes it and breaks it apart in a certain way. Then enzyme two takes it, breaks it apart in a certain way. Uh, and then finally, enzyme three will take it and break it down um, to the most simple molecule that the cell can actually use. Okay? Um, now, the, the reason why this is seen more in catabolism is because if something isn't present within the cell that needs to be broken down, why should the cell waste energy on making the enzymes to break it down? Okay? So only when something becomes available, in this case we talked about lactose, but it can be other things um, that become available, other molecules that the bacteria needs to break down, and as soon as they become available, they can bind to the repressor, repressor falls off, and then it can make the enzymes in order to break down that specific molecule.